In recent years, Lenovo Group, once a leading tech giant in China, has come under frequent criticism from young Chinese consumers over product quality issues. In early March 2024, on social media, a man posted a video saying that although his Lenovo laptop was only purchased less than three months ago, it was already experiencing screen flickering issues. He complained that the quality of Lenovo's product is always questionable. The man also warned people against buying the Lenovo ThinkBook 14 laptop, noting that he was not the only one experiencing this issue. He hoped that pressure from social media would also urge Lenovo to pay attention to quality issues. He stressed that even large enterprises could collapse if they neglect quality. Amid consumer complaints about quality, Lenovo Group's parent company, Lenovo Holdings, faced significant financial losses. On March 8, 2024, Lenovo Holdings issued a profit warning on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. They projected a net loss of about 3.6 to 4 billion yuan. Approximately 500 to 560 million U.S. dollars for the fiscal year 2023, compared to a net profit of 1.17 billion yuan, approximately 160 million U.S. dollars in 2022. Furthermore, financial statements revealed that Lenovo's fiscal year 2023 revenue was 61.95 billion U.S. dollars, which is roughly 14 percent decrease from the previous year. The group's net profit was at 1.6 billion U.S. dollars, a 21 percent decline from the previous year. Fourth quarter revenue was 12.6 billion U.S. dollars, a 24 percent decrease from the previous year, and net profits dropped by 72 percent to 110 million U.S. dollars. Founded in 1984, Lenovo Group Limited is a global technology firm based in China, renowned for its expertise in designing, manufacturing, and selling a wide range of products. Their products include consumer electronics, personal computers, software, and business solutions, along with associated services. With operations spanning more than 60 countries and territories, Lenovo's products are available in around 180 countries worldwide. The company achieved a milestone in 2013 by becoming the leading personal computer manufacturer globally. Despite this success, Lenovo experienced a downturn starting in 2017. Some have expressed their nostalgia, remarking that Lenovo's products were an integral part of their student and professional lives, describing them as tears of an era. They express confusion over why Lenovo has started to incur losses. However, others have pointed out that there were early signs of Lenovo's decline. In March 2023, an account verified as a Lenovo Group employee announced on social media that Lenovo had officially decided to discontinue its own smartphone brand, Legion, in March. It retains only the Motorola business, which is acquired for 2.9 billion U.S. dollars. During this period, the company also laid off about 5% of its workforce, as confirmed by posts from several individuals also verified as Lenovo employees. Reports indicated that many former Motorola employees had been laid off too. By the end of September 2022, Lenovo Group had approximately 82,000 global employees, meaning a 5% reduction equated to about 4,100 job losses. However, some insiders at Lenovo have stated that while layoffs are a common occurrence in any company, the elimination of an entire business unit is quite rare. The decision to discontinue Lenovo's smartphone operations and proceed with layoffs can be traced back to the company's poor sales figures on e-commerce platforms. 
Sales data from JD.com, a top Chinese electronics retailer, reveals that since launching various smartphone models, including the Legion, Y70, Y90, and the Pro Gaming Phone, only one outlet managed to surpass 1,000 units in sales, with the majority of outlets selling only about 200 units each. Moreover, on another major e-commerce site called Tmall, the official Lenovo flagship store reported just 54 units sold of the Y70 smartphone. Lenovo company cited the downturn in the PC market as the reason for its layoffs, stating that reducing the workforce would also help decrease costs and increase efficiency in some ways. Two months after the layoffs in May 2023, Lenovo Group announced its financial results for the fiscal year 2022 to 2023. The company reported an annual revenue of 424 billion yuan, approximately 59 billion US dollars, a 14% decrease compared to the previous year. Net profit was 12.9 billion yuan, approximately 1.8 billion US dollars, showing a 21% decrease. Furthermore, the financial report highlighted a 21% decline in revenue from the Intelligent Devices Business Group, which includes personal computers, tablets, smartphones, and other smart devices. Regarding the company's dramatic shift from profit to loss, Lenovo Holdings attributed to it two main reasons. First, the global economic slowdown has affected the profits from its industrial operations sector, which was influenced by market and industry factors. Secondly, the profit and revenue from the company's industry incubation and investment sector have also declined compared to the previous year, also due to unfavorable market and industry factors. However, these oversimplified explanations did not sit well with the public, with many expressing their frustration at Lenovo's founder, Liu Chanzi, who is both the founder of Lenovo Group and a member of the Chinese Communist Party. He is a key figure behind the company, though not as widely recognized as the Lenovo laptops themselves. According to media reports, Liu has deflected responsibility, claiming he owns less than 1% of the company's shares and has even threatened legal action against those who criticize them. Media reports have identified corruption as another potential factor in Lenovo's difficulties. Despite a debt ratio as high as 90%, Lenovo continues to obtain bank loans for product research and development, even though it spends just 3% of its budget on R&D. The actual use of these significant loan amounts remains a mystery. Additionally, despite the company's continuous losses, its retired founder, Liu, still commands an annual salary of 140 million yuan. Similarly, Yang Yuanqing and more than 20 other top executives each earn over 100 million yuan a year. Some commentators argue that Lenovo's performance shifting from profit to loss cannot be attributed entirely to global economic and market factors. International sanctions on Chinese electronics might also be a contributing factor. On January 25, 2024, Taiwan's first batch of conscripted soldiers were enlisted. Taiwan's Ministry of Defense highlighted the need to enhance cybersecurity. Therefore, training army units have to make sure that using smartphones and related information equipment from mainland China is banned within military bases. This ban includes Lenovo smartphones. Sanctions from the United States have been even more severe. In early 2023, a Chinese surveillance balloon drifting across U.S. airspace heightened nationwide vigilance against espionage, prompting experts to delve into research on the subject. Retired U.S. Army General James Marks, who has served as a diplomat in Asia and worked in the intelligence sector for several years, drew a connection between the Montana balloon incident and the extensive use of Lenovo computers in U.S. government offices. He warned in an article for Newsweek that these Lenovo computers could be transmitting data to the Chinese government as they are an important indirect shareholder of Lenovo. This was not the first time Marks had reached such a conclusion. In 2019, the Pentagon released a report on Chinese military strength, highlighting various methods China uses to acquire foreign military and dual-use technologies. These methods include targeted foreign direct investments, cyber theft, leveraging private Chinese firms to acquire these technologies, and utilizing its intelligence services, computer intrusions, and other illicit means. That same year, Marx wrote about the establishment of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, CAS, by the Chinese government. He explained that the CAS is not merely a research or academic institution. It also serves as a case study on how state-controlled entities utilize their resources so the communist government can achieve their goals. 
This is because of its close connections with the CCP's military, nuclear industry, and cyber espionage programs. For instance, the CAS and its affiliated companies develop artificial intelligence projects, hypersonic spacecraft, robotic submarines, underwater platforms, and missile technology for the Chinese military. Additionally, its technological and scientific achievements help the CCP expand its presence in the Pacific, particularly in the South China Sea. Marx noted that among all enterprises under the CAS, Lenovo has been the most successful. Internal sources indicate that the CAS owns 35% of Lenovo Holdings, which owns 31% of Lenovo. It can be said that the Chinese government is the largest shareholder of Lenovo. The CAS and Lenovo have benefited from China's state-led high-tech research and development program. This program is known as the 863 program, which has funded technology development in IT, aviation, and automation fields for over 30 years. Chinese government institutions, research labs, and state-owned enterprises also receive funding under this program. In the U.S., no manufacturer has seen sales growth exceed that of Lenovo, which has contracts with over 900 state and local government agencies. Without the support of the CAS and the Chinese government, Lenovo would not have expanded so rapidly. Marx stated on the American commentary website, thebulwark.com, that the Chinese government deliberately blurs the lines between public and private enterprises. This is to ensure that military, espionage, and commercial interests are intertwined and is achieved through extensive investment in state-owned enterprises, state-sanctioned hacking, and cyber warfare. He even stated that everything the Chinese government does, including diplomacy, economic development, military advancement, and information gathering, is aimed at fulfilling the objectives of the Chinese Communist Party. The China Tech Threat Organization has found that Lenovo laptops have been tools of the Chinese government's malign activities, providing potential entry points for cyber espionage activities. This has led to a rare bipartisan agreement in the U.S., subjecting Lenovo to scrutiny by various government departments. According to Bloomberg, Lenovo stock price increased by 70% in 2023, driven by optimism for products with embedded artificial intelligence functions. However, due to U.S. concerns over stocks linked to China, by the end of January 2024, a bill was proposed to block some Chinese biotechnology companies from securing federal government contracts. This led to a swift decline in Lenovo stock price, which has now dropped by more than 25 percent. Amid tensions between China and the U.S. and concerns over weakening demand, investors have begun to rapidly sell off shares in Chinese companies potentially facing U.S. sanctions. Bloomberg News reported that in February 2024, Lenovo Group's stock price fell by more than 12 percent, erasing a total of 1.8 billion U.S. dollars in market value. Managing Director at Singapore's Union Bank Care Privy, Veer Sern Ling, commented that any negative news related to China now prompts investors to sell their stocks. He pointed out that the recent drop in Lenovo stock price, spurred by concerns over potential U.S. sanctions, suggests the market's reaction is not without merit. Additionally, it has been noted that Lenovo's deteriorating reputation, both internationally and within China, is significantly attributed to substandard product quality. In December 2023, a Lenovo laptop charger was recalled across Australia due to internal defects that could lead to battery short-circuiting and potentially fires. The Australian Competition and Consumer Commission reported that the screws inside the Lenovo USB-C laptop power bank 20,000 mAh could become loose, leading to battery short circuits and potentially causing fires. There have already been reports of property damage due to this issue. Here's someone who shared a photo and commented that the quality of Lenovo is very poor, noting that the hardware started to crack after just over a year of use. Additionally, they mentioned that customer service did not address the quality issue at all. The poor quality of Lenovo computers has also left young people in China feeling disillusioned. A young woman shared her experience of purchasing a Lenovo laptop that, within just six months of use, would black out and crash after charging for five minutes and could not be restarted. Not to mention, the charging area heated up rapidly, a problem that persisted throughout the six months. 
This woman also exposed the sales tactics of Lenovo's in-store repair staff. Nearly every customer who came in for repairs has issues with crashing and the screen going black. Nevertheless, Lenovo's technicians would primarily focus on selling their three-year extended warranty service for 1,000 yuan. Customers who paid for the extension received a warm welcome, while those who did not were simply ignored. Lenovo, seriously, can we not have computers that can only go six months without issues? If you spent even a tenth of the effort you put into selling extended warranties on actually making better computers or improving your technician skills, your sales really would be much higher than they are now. Lenovo, it's 11.30 at night. Can you really sleep peacefully? Apart from the poor quality, another reason for Lenovo's declining performance in China is the decreasing demand for computers. With the widespread adoption of smartphones, more people are using their phones for entertainment, online shopping, learning, and even some work tasks that were previously done on PCs. Furthermore, the emergence of new products like tablets, which can fully satisfy work requirements with detachable and foldable keyboards, have made computers seem less necessary. Many users' home computers are gathering dust. According to a report by market research firm Counterpoint Research, global personal computer shipments in the first quarter of 2023 were 56.7 million units. This is a 28% decrease compared to the previous year. This marks the fifth consecutive quarter of decline since 2022 and the lowest first quarter shipments in the past 10 years. With overall consumer demand weakening, experts believe computer sales will not return to previous levels, and even price reductions at this time will have limited effect. To escape this growth dilemma and change public perception, Lenovo has been attempting to transform in recent years. In 2017, Executive Vice President of Lenovo Group and President of its China region, Liu Jun, launched a new strategy aimed at moving towards intelligent direction and making a shift from being product-focused to customer-focused. Although this transformation has yielded some results, the outside world has lost confidence in Lenovo's development. Experts have noted that despite Lenovo's years of transformation efforts, its revenue still relies heavily on sales of hardware like PCs. As demand for consumer electronics weakens and Lenovo's products show little innovation, Lenovo's hardware sales have been on a downward trend. Adding to the concern, Lenovo's secondary growth areas are also facing challenges, with revenues and profits declining. This suggests that Lenovo's path to recovery might be quite challenging.